you might think that all you need to do is just select an area, type in a prompt and hit generate and that should do the trick, right? But is it the reality? When you actually sit down to do this and you keep hitting generate again and again, nothing really seems to happen, right? And by chance, if it does seem to work, it changes the original eye or removes the glasses altogether. Do not worry, there is a way. Today, we'll cover the right steps, the right settings and the right techniques to magically and easily remove glare from glasses no matter how complex that is. We'll also learn what to do if you don't have Photoshop beta with AI or Photoshop at all. So without any further ado, let's get started. First of all, you want to make sure you're on the latest version of Photoshop beta and right now I'm using version 27.0.1. If you don't already have it, you can easily install it through your Creative Cloud desktop app. Go to apps, beta at the top and from here install Photoshop beta. And by the time you're watching this, maybe this feature makes it to the main version. The first technique is something we use when the eyes are not fully covered and it's slightly visible. In those cases, simply select the rectangular marquee tool and I recommend that because generations are rectangle anyway and it gives you a breathing room. Let us make a selection like so. Select a bit extra and then in the contextual taskbar, click on generate a fill. If you're not able to see the contextual taskbar, simply go to window and you want to make sure contextual taskbar is checked. Right in here, type in remove the reflections clearly this exact prompt remove the reflections from the glasses and the most important step here is not using nano banana instead click on the model menu and choose flux for this one and let us click on generate that's it you can do a couple of tries if you wish to but most of the times and in this case oh my gosh it worked perfectly here is the overall before and here is the after it's the exact same eye. For more accuracy, if you want some more variations, you can click on generate here for more options to show up. Now Flux, like any generative AI model, has a resolution limit and sometimes when you're selecting a bigger area, it might lead to a lower resolution. We can select this entire area and remove the reflections from the glasses all at once. But since this is a bigger image and you can clearly see that, it will lead to degradation in resolution. So instead, you can use this obvious trick. Let's press Ctrl or Command D to deselect, zoom into one glass only and then make a selection around it. And the idea is doing it one at a time. Then click on generate a fill, the same prompt. Again, you want to make sure flux is activated and simply click on generate. And as you can see, it did a pretty amazing job. So here is the before, here is the after. And similarly, you can do the other eye one at a time. Let us take a look at the overall before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. I need you to pay attention towards the edges because there will be certain changes. You can create a soft selection, but I recommend doing this manually for absolute precision. So this was the generated area, right? If you go closer towards the edges, you will see certain differences here. Either they would be slightly misaligned or there will be a slight line or maybe a slight change in color. So one of the other best practice that I use from time to time is only keep it in the areas where you need it. For it, I personally delete the mask, drag it and drop it to the trash can. Create a new negative mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key and then clicking on the mask button. This creates a black mask. Remember, black hides, white shows. With the mask selected, you take the brush white as the foreground color, take a soft round brush and only paint over the areas where you need it to keep everything else intact. And if you don't want to have the hassle of deleting a mask, you can always create a group. Let us take a look at our second example. In this case, you can clearly see the edges of the generation. To fix it again, this time, let us select the first generation layer, hold the control or command, select the second one and then press Ctrl or Command G to make a group of that. Then hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask button. This creates a negative mask. Similarly, with the same white brush and the mask selected, just paint over the areas where you need it. And that's it. Now there's going to be times and examples when this simple trick is not going to work. In this case, as you can see, the eyes are really covered a lot. If we were to try the same prompt, 
With Flux, let us hit generate and see what happens. As you can see, it removes the reflections all right, but it also changes the eyes entirely. Before, after. In this case, we need to use a different approach and maybe a different model. Now this model, the AI one. Let us make a selection of the entire glasses. Now Nano Banana is not great at removing reflections, but it's excellent at removing complex stuff. So this time, click on generate a fill and instead type in remove the glasses altogether. And from the models menu, you want to make sure Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana is activated, not Flux. And then click on Generate. You already know where we are going with this. And keep in mind, this might require a couple tries. And let's have a look at the result. Brilliant! It's the same exact eye. Here's the before, here's the after. It has moved a bit, but it's the same eye. Now let's see if we can align the movement. For it, simply change the blend mode from Normal to Difference. Let us hide this and then you can press Ctrl or Command D with the arrow keys, move it to the right or left to see where it exactly aligns with the eyes. This seems to be perfect as you can clearly see the edges are aligning. If it's black, it has aligned. Hit Enter or Return and change the blend mode back to normal. Now all we need to do is to use the magic of masking. Let us delete this particular mask. Again, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button to create a negative mask. Then you can take the brush white as the foreground color, just simply paint here. You don't have to recover all the areas because if you recover this area, the shadows go away. Keep it like this so that the eyes stay. You can also use the quick selection tool to make it easier. With the quick selection tool, make sure sample all layers is checked. Let's make a selection like this. Take the brush back again. And with white, just paint this area. There you go. Easy to fix. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Yes, there are certain more reflections, but don't worry about that right now. Now that the eyes are recovered, it's easy to fix the rest with Flux. So with the rectangular marquee tool again, make a selection of this entire area. Click on Generate a Fill again, and this time, choose Flux as the model. And we will use the same prompt, Remove Reflections from the Glass. Click on Generate, and that should easily complete our glare removal. Have a look. Before, after. Pretty amazing. But do not forget one last step. With the first layer selected, hold the Ctrl or Command, click on the second layer, press Ctrl or Command G. Create a group, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the Mask button to create a negative mask. Then take the brush, with white as the foreground color, only paint over areas where you needed the change, and this keeps the edges natural. Let me share with you another impossible example. The eyes are entirely covered here. So I used Nano Banana to remove the glasses altogether. You can clearly see the prompt is remove the glasses. And then let's create a group out of this. Press Ctrl or Command G. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the mask button to create a negative mask. And then you can use the quick selection tool. That's up to you to make a quick selection inside of it. Let's add this area as well. And then with the brush, with white as the foreground color, just paint on the inside. Press Ctrl or Command D and you will see there's a problem. The shadows are gone, the selection of the glass is not proper, some areas are not great. Now you can take your time to fix this. Or why not try something smarter? Let us select the same area by holding the Ctrl or Command and clicking on the thumbnail here. And this time, click on Generate a Fill and type in Fix the Glasses Frame. Now since you want to stay closer to the context, Choose, this time, Flux Context Pro. And let's see what it does. And just like magic, it fixes the frame. Here's the before, as you can see. Here's the after. It moves it quite a bit, no issues. Change the blend mode from normal to difference. Press Ctrl or Command T. With the arrow keys, try to move it so that it's closest to black. This seems to be about right. Hit Enter or Return. Change the blend mode back to normal and then hold the shift key select the topmost layer and then the bottommost layer press ctrl or command g to create a big group hold the alt key or the option key click on the mask button to create a negative mask take the same white soft brush and just paint over those areas just to match everything clearly and this my friend is the final result here's the before here is the after Now, what do you do if you don't have Photoshop beta or Photoshop at all, or for some reason, something is just not working? In that case, simply go to firefly.adobe.com. There are many platforms that give you access to Flux, but in this case, you can go to Boards and just create a new board. Now, Firefly Boards gives you a lot of flexibility, including what we want for high-res generation. 
let us drag and drop this photo. It is that simple. And then we want to fix this, right? So why not just crop it directly? Using these controls, you can just crop it the way you like. Similarly, let's do it from all the sides. You can also hold the space bar to move it just like you do in Photoshop. I'm gonna keep a bit of the face. Then click on generate image and using the same prompt here, which is remove reflections from the glass. Let us pick the model from this drop down and let's pick Flux Context Pro. And to use this image as a reference, click here and then click on this particular image. Click on generate. You can also generate a couple times so that it's processing simultaneously, giving you a lot of options. But keep in mind, credits are deducted for these. To check how many free credits you get, whether you get them or not, and what are the plans, I'll leave them down in the description. You have a couple options and all of them processed brilliantly. Let us go with this one. You can just drag it and drop it to the board. And as you can see, this is wonderful, wonderful resolution. You can download it by clicking on the download button. Click on download. Now back inside of Photoshop or any photo editing application, you can open your original photo. On top of that, just place the one that we created like so. Hit enter or return and to simply align it, with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Let's rasterize this layer by right clicking on it and choosing Rasterize Layer. And then select both of these layers. Hold the Ctrl or Command, select the second one as well. Go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. If it doesn't align, you can also do it manually. Auto is fine and hit OK. And it automatically aligns. Create a mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key and clicking on the mask button to create a negative mask with the brush with a white soft brush just reveal it in the areas where you need it that's it done before after a couple years ago i made a video about removing glare from glasses it had those complex glares and we had to go in and do high-end dodging and burning inside of that and even then we had to use some kind of cloning or healing to fix all the edges and then on top of that we had to color match that would usually take 30 minutes to an hour, depending upon the complexity, and see how far we have come. But notice what happened. Those techniques, those concepts, those ideas are still very important. Because when AI fails and it isn't able to do what we want it to do, these are the techniques that's going to save your rear. And that's what makes you a professional and separates you from people who just know AI. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.